can you bypass the preamp in a DAC? Is the preamp in the DAC as good as my preamp? Does it have a good volume control? Just a few questions I get regularly, so it was about time to answer them together with some other DAC related questions I get. Many DACs, but not all, can be used as a digital preamplifier. Some even have an analog preamp integrated. To answer the aforementioned questions and more, let's see what's happening inside a DAC. Don't be afraid, we'll keep it understandable for non-electronic engineers and, as a result, hardly interesting for electronic engineers. I will use so-called block diagrams where each block stands for a function. That function in practice might be a single chip or multiple components. To avoid confusion, I use the abbreviation DAC for the ready to use DAC device, while I use digital to analog converter for the conversion circuit inside the DAC device. Most DACs have more than one input. Let's start with the AES3 group of digital inputs, SPDIF, AES-EBU and the optical TOSLINK. These have an identical data structure and have the clock signal embedded. Via the switch the used input is chosen and sent to the AES3 receiver. Usually this is a custom chip that translates the AES3 input signal into a serial clock signal the serial audio data that contains the left and right signal sequentially and a word select signal that indicates when the serial data is for the left or the right channel. This group of signals is standardized and is called Inter-IC Sound, abbreviated to I2S. This is the standard for audio signals in between integrated circuits in a device. From there the I2S signal usually goes to a digital signal processor that upsamples and decimates the signal to a higher sampling rate and a lower bit depth. It therefore also needs noise shaping. The signal then goes to the digital to analog conversion circuit. Often the digital signal processing and the digital to analog conversion is done in one chip, the DAC chip. In more upmarket products these two functions can be separate. The output of the digital to analog conversion is a current. Since nowadays audio components are connected over voltage connections, a current to voltage circuit follows. Then an analog volume control might follow, after which an output buffer circuit sends the analog signal to the outputs. If the DAC has a USB input, some other questions can be raised. Nowadays DACs will have USB inputs according to the USB Audio Class 2 standard that can do all sampling rates and bit depth up to 32 bits. It can also do multi-channel, the only limit being that the total bandwidth of the multi-channel signal does not exceed that of high speed USB connection, which is 480 MHz. 30 channels of 24 bit 192 kHz is no problem. For stereo, the highest sampling rate I have seen is 1536 kHz, although the relevance of course is very limited since music at 384 kHz is already very scarce. Nowadays USB Audio Class 2 is supported by all operating systems, but computers running early Windows 10 and before needs a separate installed driver to function. Older computers pre-2010 might not have hardware to support USB Audio Class 2. These do the now called USB Audio Class 1 standard that does 24 bit and 96 kHz at best. It also uses an isogrenous protocol, meaning that the computer clocks the DAC, which isn't that good. USB Audio Class 2 uses an asynchronous protocol, leaving the clock to the DAC. In both cases a USB interface chip is needed to translate the USB signal to I2S. A switch at the input of the DSP circuit lets you switch between the output of the AES3 receiver and the USB interface.
If a deck has one or more I2S inputs, you might be in for some frustration since there is no standard connector. Even if the digital source has an I2S output of the same type of connector as on the DAC, it might not be compatible. Let's first discuss the connector. I have seen four times RCA, three times B and C, RJ45 and HDMI. When using three or four coax cables, make sure they are identical, have the same length and the correct impedance. And of course, connect the corresponding connectors. RJ45 uses a network cable. It has the advantage of balanced connections, but the pinout is not standardized. Therefore DACs using I2S over RJ45 usually have settings to change the pinout configuration. The same goes for I2S over HDMI. Again balanced connections and again no official standard for the pinout. But the pinout PS Audio uses appears to have become the de facto standard. Nevertheless, if you intend to use I2S over RJ45 or HDMI, make sure you buy your equipment at a company that offers good support. And just to be sure, you can't connect I2S over RJ45 to a network and you can't connect I2S over HDMI to a normal HDMI input or output on your TV or AV receiver. When we look at our block diagram, you see that I2S only needs to be buffered and or galvanically separated. The I2S signal can then simply be selected as input on the digital signal processor. Not all DACs have an analog volume control. Even the output buffer function might have been integrated in the I2V converter. In that case the digital signal processor might do the volume control. Often Chinese ladder converters based DAC are non-oversampling, in which case a digital signal processor is not needed. But then an analog low pass filter is needed, the so called reconstruction filter that is there to prevent aliasing. This type of DAC seldom have a volume control and thus can't be used as a digital preamp of course. Let's get back to the oversampling DAC and see how an analog preamp section fits in. If there are analog inputs on a DAC, there is an input selector that is followed up by a buffer amplifier circuit. The signal then is sent to a selector that, when set to analog, continues through the volume control after which it is buffered again and sent to the output. In some cases there is a phono input as well, in which case another amplifier stage, this time with RIAA correction needs to be added. If you use your amplifier to set the volume, you don't want the volume control in the DAC to function. Some DACs have a volume control bypass switch or a setting in a setup menu. But if your DAC doesn't have that, don't worry. When the volume control in the DAC is done digitally, set the volume control on your DAC to 100%. In almost all cases, the digital signal processor does not do any volume change. The signal then is the same as when there was no volume control. By the way, digital volume controls today can even be better than the analog ones. If your DAC has analog volume control, that can sound good too. It depends of course on the potentiometer used and the rest of the analog audio circuits, but in general you are fine. Set the volume control to 100% and you are probably fine. Try a lower setting if the sound at higher levels is a bit harsh. For in that case the output voltage on the DAC is very high. This might occur with balanced outputs. Again a tip, connect RCA outputs always to RCA inputs. Never use RCA to XLR adapters unless there is no other way. The sound of XLR inputs is not better. Although I have described as many variants as possible, there will always be exceptions and unmentioned variants. When in doubt, you can always listen what sounds best. If you don't hear a difference, there isn't, at least not for you and at that moment in time. 
that might change over time when your hearing gets strained more and more. I say it every week, but let's reiterate. Whatever you do, enjoy the music. A good stereo is to play music. It's fine if your stereo pleases you in different ways too, but my focus is on the sound. Don't let the numbers fool you. 192 kilohertz can sound truly better on many stereos, as it does on my setup 2 and 3. But on my setup 1 there is no difference between them when the same masters were used. 200 watts isn't necessarily better than 100 watts. It can be, but then it might be because the amp is better built, perhaps not because of the extra 100 watts. By the way, did you know that to sound twice as loud you need an amp that has a tenfold power output? And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. As usual there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.